Best performance by an actor in a television series, musical, or comedy, Donald Glover for Atlanta. Hi, guys. This is um, surreal. Nice to see you all here. This is hi, nuts. Donald. Yes. Oh, we're supposed to ask questions. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. oh that's hi. what we're doing? Jeannie Wolf. <laughs> yeah. uh, you said, we didn't even think people would like this. No. But long before it went on the air, it was one of those shows that was predicted to catch on. Mm -hmm. People expected it to change things, to be great, to be accepted. When you started hearing that, before the show started airing, did that scare you? That, did that encourage you? And then as it became accepted, how did that encourage you? Um, I, I guess I always, when I heard that kind of stuff, I just, my instinct was to pull back. I guess my, my instinct is always to under promise over deliver like I don't like it when people are like kind of this is because like I think the the lens that the last lens that we have as artists is people's expectations we've done so many things and there's been so many great things already made you know uh, that it's important to just think about how it's getting to people you know whether it's through their phones or how they're hearing about it so yeah my instinct was to just kind of pull back I suppose I was really excited I've been trying to make this show for a long time. All right, so besides the, the build-up, mm -hmm. when it began to be accepted, when it began, uh, when people began commenting on it, how did that change? I only cared about what people in Atlanta thought. <laughs> like, I was like, if I can't walk through Atlanta, like, you can't name a show like, oh, Detroit, and then have Detroit people hate it, you know? So I was like, I really was just only caring about, like, if my parents thought it was cool, if my cousins thought it was cool. You know, everybody who lived in Atlanta, you know, if I could go to a Chick-fil-A and have people be like, you yeah, have you seen that Donald Glover show? Like, I was like, okay, cool. It's kind of touching something that's personal. So, yeah. Hey, Donald. Hi. Over here. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I Thanks. wanted to talk in particular why you decided to shout out uh, My Ghost and particularly the song Bad and Bougie. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Migos. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, it's okay. Like, is it, I don't, they're not here, so it's fine. I won't tell them. Um, because I think they're, I think they're the Beatles of this generation and they don't get a lot of respect, I think, outside of like Atlanta. I mean, not that they don't get a lot of respect, but it's like there's a generation, sort of like the YouTube generation that I kind of came up with. There's a generation of kids that are growing up on something that's completely separate from uh, a whole group of people. And I, I just feel like, and honestly, that song is just fly. Like, it, there's no better song to have sex to. Yeah. Yeah. Right here in front. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, another thing that is big coming up for you is uh, Young Landau. Yeah. How are you uh, preparing for that? Uh, not getting to eat anything enjoyable for the rest of my life. Um, uh, focusing mostly on, you know, like Lando's a big deal to me. Uh, it was the, literally the first toy I ever got. So I really just want to, you know, it's it's interesting when you have something that's kind of iconic in a range where like people pay attention to it. Uh, you want to, you just, it, it, it's hard because you want to live up to their expectation, but all you can really do is live up to your own. And Star Wars is kind of, you know, really high. But I think, um, I really just want to have fun. Like, I know that the directors, you know, Chris Phil, like, they're amazing. Like, I, I love the guy who's playing Han, Han like, it's it's gonna be a good time, like you know Emily Clark. It's it's gonna be fun. So like I'm just you know getting ready to just have fun with those guys. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Donald, um, a couple of months ago, Chris Rock was speaking at an industry conference, and he said that he did not that he as his as he was really hitting his stardom in his time, he would never have been able to make a show like Atlanta yeah. in his day. It just would not have found an audience. It wouldn't have found a network to support it. As you, you said, you've been trying to make this show for a long time. Were you, were you surprised? Did you have a, a struggle to explain your vision for the show and how you would tackle comedy in a, very, you know, in a different 
way than the sitcoms that we have become accustomed to? Um, I think the best things just can't be explained. Like after you're done with them, then they, they can be. I definitely, I just kind of Trojan horsed it. I told FX it was something it wasn't um, until we got there and then I, and, and then hoped it would be enjoyable when it got there. And, you know, thank God, like, you know, John Landgraf and the FX team and everybody was, was, was rooting for us and pushed for us. I've been trying to make this show, I went home uh, I went home, I guess, like a year, like two years, a year and a half ago after I did like Bonnaroo. I went home and my mom was clearing out my room and she handed my brother like a box of just stuff and he pulls out, I'm just talking to my mom and he pulls out this letter and it was a letter I forgot I wrote that he, that I sent to him through college and he's like, I was like, yo, I had this dream where we write a show together and we do this and we do that. And like, I was like, and I, so I guess it's been in my head for a long time. So I, I like I kind of said on the stage before, it's like, you know, magic is, I, I truly do believe in magic and like, you know, dreams and like, you know, we, we've kind of forgotten that. So I, I feel like that's the kind of dreamy part of my show. It's like, you've got to believe in like kind of human magic a little bit. That made any sense, I don't know. Hi, Ina, TV2 Hi. Norway, all the way back uh, here. Oh, which one? So you guys duke it out. I'm not going to... No, no, you okay. go ahead. Okay. It's fine. It's a little bit about what you just said, because I loved what you said in your speech about magic. Yeah. Um, what do you think we all can do to make a little bit more magic in the world and make it a little bit better? I think, honestly, right now we live in a time where things are very divisive. And, you know, I think Meryl Streep was, was speaking on this a lot, where it's like we all have a lot of responsibility. And... I remember going to school because I wasn't allowed to talk about magic and I wasn't allowed, I knew Santa Claus was fake, but I was around a lot of kids who didn't know that. So you have that responsibility to keep that going and understand why you're doing it because of joy. So I, I think human joy is super important. It doesn't come from computers. It, doesn't, it just comes from belief. You know, acting, making music, all that stuff is believing in something that you Maybe someone older doesn't truly believe, but like when you see it in a child, it makes you kind of believe it again, you know, because we forget how innocent and beautiful we were. So I think, yeah, it's our responsibility to make magic again, because I think a lot of the shit that's happening now is bullshit. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, guys.